May I inquire the witness, Your Honor? You may. Thank you. Uh, tell me your name, please. Rebecca L. Fortin. Ms. Fortin, for the record, how old are you today? I am 50 years old. And uh, Ms. Fortin, um, are you employed? Yes, I am. What type of work do you do? I'm law enforcement. Okay. In addition to law enforcement, do you also have a, a rental property that you rent out? Yes, I do. And what city is that located in? Gross Point Park, Michigan. And can you describe that for us, please, the Gross Point Park property? Yes, it is a duplex. It is located at 1224, 1226 Weyburn Street. 2426 Weyburn? Correct. Is it an upper and lower plot? Yes, it is. And it's a duplex, you said, correct? Yes, it is. And how long have you had that property? Since 1991. Okay. And is your habit to rent it out, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to take you back in time to last fall. Was the upper part of that flat, was it vacant? Yes, it was. And were you looking for a tenant? Yes, I was. And tell us what you did to look to place a tenant in the upper, upper location of that flat. Well, I was having difficulty finding tenants. Um, so my mother, had, who also owns a duplex in Gross Point, had mentioned that she had used an agency that she found in the Gross Point Blue Book. And okay. she had Let me stop you there. Can you tell me what the Gross Point Blue Book is? It is a um, publication put out by a Gross Point company. It is um, like a yellow pages for the Gross Points. It's supposed to be businesses that are located in the Gross Point Park area. So when your mother mentioned the Gross Point Blue Book, were you familiar with that? Yes, I was. Okay, and so your mother said that she had used the Blue Book in the past, correct? Correct. And did you utilize the Blue Book? Uh, I did not utilize it. She mentioned that she had found a agency through the Blue Book, and it also happened that um, the agency that she used, the owner of it, had attended church with a friend of hers and spoke highly of the family. They knew that him and his wife had attended church with their congregation. Now, based on information, did you do something? Uh, yes, I decided that I would use the agency. And uh, did you contact the agency? Uh, I contacted the individual that owns it. And did you see that person in court today? The person that you contacted? Uh, yes, I do. Could you point him out, please, and tell us where he is? Mr. Bob Bashera, he's sitting there in the green suit. May the record reflect the witnesses pointing to identify the person of the defendant, Mr. Robert Bashara. Now, had you ever met Mr. Bashara before you reached out to, to him to help you find someone to rent your, your uh, space? Uh, I met him once at my mother's rental, uh, when, or her home that she also has a duplex. She rents out the upper unit, and he was doing some work on that. And did you call him to help him help you uh, rent your duplex? Well, I spoke to him the day that he was there. Okay. All right. Now, after your mother suggested calling uh, Mr. Bashara, did you do that? Yes, I did. And you spoke to him on the phone? Uh, yes, I did. And did you explain what you, what you wanted? Yes, I explained. What did he say to you? Um, I explained that I had this rental property, that the lower unit was currently occupied by my father, but I needed the upper unit rented out, and that there was a lockbox on it. I, I believe I also gave him the lockbox code so we could go over and check out the apartment. Now, the lower unit was currently occupied, is that correct? Correct. And occupied by a, a member of your family, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, after you gave Mr. Bashir that information, what did he say? Um, he, I believe he said he would go over and check it out, and he contacted me approximately a month later and told me that he had some individuals that uh, he had shown the place to and that were possibly interested in it. And did you talk to him about those individuals? Uh, yes, I did. And were those individuals suitable to you? Uh, no, they were not. And why? Well, in the first case, he said he, I, I made it very clear to him because my father was living down below um, that I wanted a minimum number of tenants, no more than possibly two, and also due to the wear and tear in the apartment and the size of it, I didn't feel that it was suitable for any more than two individuals to live in it because okay. it was a two-bedroom. So the first uh, the first time he proposed to you was not suitable for those conditions, correct? Correct. It was, I believe, a man, his wife, and their two children. Okay. And um, after you rejected those tenants, did you hear back from Mr. Bashar after that? Uh, yes. A short time later, he called me with another set of prospective tenants. And what was that? What was that group of tenants like? That was um, that was fine to me. That that group sounded fine. It was, I believe, a woman and her daughter. So it was two individuals, and it fit my criteria. And what happened to that group? Um, he never called me back on, in regards to that. Okay. Uh, did, did you hear from him a third time? Uh, yes, I did. A approximately when did you hear from him that time? I don't remember the exact date, but I remember the date that I, that I agreed to meet him there with this tenant. Okay. Was it around uh, the 1st of October in 2011? Uh, we met on – it was approximately sometime early in October that he contacted me, and it was on the 8th of October – that I met him at the rental property with the prospective tenant. Before we get to the meeting, I want to, I want to talk to you about what he said to you on the phone, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. He contacted you and said he has a possible tenant. Is that right? Correct. Tell us what he said. 
um, that in regards to the other two or the, the new perspective? The new perspective tenant. He really didn't go too in-depth. He just said he had a uh, prospective tenant, and I believe he may have mentioned it was a single man with a daughter. Okay. I'm, I'm not positive on that point. Based on that, did you agree to meet with him? Yes, I did. And did you meet with him on or about October 8th of 2011? I met with him on exactly October 8th, 2012. And where did you meet? We met at the upper unit, 1220, the upper unit, which is 1226 Wayburn. Okay. That's the one that you were trying to rent out, is that right? Correct. Okay. And was with anyone with Mr. Bashar? Yes, there was. And had you ever met that other person before? No, I had not. And did you did you later learn that it was did you later learn that it was um, Mr. Gant? Yes, I did. How did you learn his name? Uh, because when I walked into the apartment, Mr. Bashir introduced to him him to me as Mr. Joseph Gantz. And just so I'm clear, this is on October eighth of two thousand eleven. Correct. correct. Okay. Um, well, Your Honor, I'm sorry, I thought the witness previously testified that twelve and I'm really October. It was 2012. I'm sorry. No, no, excuse me. That would be in October of 2011. Yes. That's I stand corrected. Right. This is the fall of 2011. Correct. Okay. Just so I'm clear. All right. So October 8, 2011, you meet Mr. Gens in the company of Mr. Bashar at your upper flat, correct? Correct. Okay. What happened? Um, when I walked into the place, I saw Mr. Um, Gens standing there. We, we met in the kitchen. Mr. Bashar was also in the kitchen, and he had a partially filled out rental application, which he handed to me. Okay. And... Um, who handed it to you? Mr. Uh, Bashara did. Okay. Um, people that opposed it 101. Any opposed witness, Your Honor? Yeah. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as people opposed to 101, ma'am. Take a look at this. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. Is that the partial uh, rental application that Mr. Bashara handed to you? Yes, it is. Okay. Move to a minute 101, Your Honor. Any objections? None. After he gave that to you, after Mr. Bashar gave you 101, what happened? Um, he began describing, he said, do you have any questions for Mr. Gens? And before I could even ask him any questions, he began explaining um, everything he could about Mr. Gens. He told him. When you say he, who are you talking about? Mr. Bashar. Okay. So was Mr. Bashar talk, describing Mr. Gens to you? Yes, he was. Was Mr. Gens in the room? Yes, he was. What was Mr. Bashar saying about Mr. Gens? Um, he said that he um, was a tenant, he, the prospective tenant that he had been in his previous place, I believe, approximately nine years. Um, he was a single dad looking uh, to find a place. He was trying to gain custody of his daughter. He would make an excellent tenant. Um, he would be neat. He would be clean because he was trying to gain custody of his daughter. I could stop over at any time, and I should find a place in good shape. Um, he also stated that he had known him a long time. He would personally vouch for his character. Um, he stated that... Um, he, had, uh, he was extremely handy, and if there needed to be any work done around the house, around the apartment, that he was capable of doing it. Did Mr. Bashar say why it was Mr. Gens was looking for a new apartment? No, he did not. Okay. Um, but I did ask that question myself later you, on. You asked the question, and who answered Correct. the question? Um, I turned to, um, after I started looking over the rental application, I turned to Mr. Gens and I said, Mr. Gens, why is it that you're leaving your apartment after nine years? That's, that's a long length of time to be someplace and up and move. And I, I looked at and I directed the question to Mr. Gens, but before he could answer, Mr. Bashira piped up that he had been living at this place for nine years. A new company um, had bought this rental apartment located at 9 in Jefferson, I believe he said. Um, they were forcing tenants out. Um, they were doubling the rent and doing upgrades to the apartment. And if I did not believe this, I could drive by and I could look and check out the apartment myself. This is Mr. Bashar answering your question. Yes, it was. Okay. What happened after that? Um, after that, I began looking at the um, rental application, and I noticed that the income on the rental application was only $1,000. His, his monthly income listed was only $1,000 a month. Mr. Gens's only income was $1,000. Correct. Okay. Did you voice some concern about that? Oh, of course I did, because it didn't make sense. The apartment rental was going to be 750 When you subtract 1000 from that, that doesn't leave much money for food, rent, utilities. What happened when you expressed concerns about that? Um, I expressed concern, and um, at that point in time, Mr. Gens did speak. Okay. Don't tell us what he said at this point. Okay. But did he talk to you about his finances? Yes, he did. Did Mr. Bashar offer anything in addition to what Mr. Gens said? Um, at that time, I don't believe so. Okay. All right. After you had this discussion with Mr. Gens about his finances, um, were you satisfied that he could be a decent tenant in your home? Uh, yes, because after I asked him about the finances, at that point in time, Mr. Gens mentioned that he was getting approximately $1,200 a month in disability. Okay. 
Did you, at that point, come to a relation, an arrangement for Mr. Gantz to pay his rent through his disability? Um, not through his disability, but later on, um, one of the reasons I did take him as a tenant is he agreed that he would have the money transferred over from his account directly into my rental account okay. to pay the rent. Was that satisfactory to you? Yes, it was. At that point, did you agree to rent to Mr. Gantz? No, I did not. What, what changed? Well, I, I, I still had – well, at that point I did, but prior to that I had some reservations that I continue to express. Okay. And who did you express those reservations to? Well, to both of them. I believe I said – I looked at Mr. Gens, but I was also talking to Mr. Bashir, and I said nothing personal against Mr. Gens, but I don't believe I'm going to take him as a tenant. I'm concerned about the amount of money um, that he is bringing in. And what did Mr. Bashir say? Um, before Joe mentioned the $1,200, I believe he appeared to get agitated. Um, he began raising his voice posturing, and he seemed very ex exasperated. Um, he stated that, um, you know, he said, come on, this is a great guy. You know, I'll personally vouch for him. You know, he, uh, he can do other things around the place. He'll, he'll make a good tenant. You won't have to worry about anything. Okay. So you decide to, to rent to Mr. Um, Gens? After he establishes or tells me that he also has this SSI that, can, uh, and he, that he can earn in addition to that another $1,000 a month without it being interrupted. Okay. Did, did you have some concerns um, either before or after you decided to rent Mr. Bashara, I mean, Mr. Gens, about his, Mr. Gens's, um emotional status? Oh, absolutely none. Um, I, I, meeting with him, before I went into law enforcement, I had worked in the psychiatric field, um, and I'd done a lot of volunteer work, and I'd also worked in group homes with mentally handicapped. Um, Mr. Gens struck me as a person that either had, was mentally handicapped, possibly a closed head injury, or perhaps a stroke. He definitely seemed to have a diminished IQ. Um, but I, and he is a very large man, but I was not afraid of him. Okay, but you, you made it due to the conclusion that he had some type of disability. Oh, absolutely. Based, that, on? based upon the way he spoke, um, he avoided eye contact with me. In fact, he seemed the opposite of, despite his size, he seemed almost intimidated. He did not want to look at me. He looked down. Um, so I was not afraid of him at all. Did you draw any conclusions about the relationship between Mr. Bashara and Mr. Gant? Um, at that time, no. Later on, um, after the murder of his wife, I, I, looking back, it seemed um, that Mr. Gantz was very much in control of the situation, very much in control of Mr. Gantz, and in control later on of the money that was involved. Okay. Did the conversations you had about Mr. with Mr. Bashara answering the questions then sort of make sense to you at that point? Oh, yes, it did. All right, so after you realized that he had disability, did that kind of pull your heartstrings a little bit about running him the property? Oh, absolutely. One of the things he mentioned besides the $1,200 a month is that he spoke of that he was trying to get this apartment because he was trying to gain custody of his daughter. Um, he said that um, he had been living at this other place, he needed a stable home, and that he would do anything for his daughter. Plus, he also mentioned that um, prior to living in this apartment, he'd been living at home with his father. When his father passed, he lost a place to live. So at the conclusion of this first meeting you had on the 8th, did you agree you agreed to rent the uh, upper flat to Mr. Gens, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you make arrangements to meet with him and Mr. Bashar later that day? Yes, I did. Tell me about that. Um, I was over helping my mom do some things at her home, which is a few blocks away, so we made arrangements to meet over there. Mr. Bashar said that he would go to his car on his computer and he would type up a standard lease that he used for his rental properties. He would then meet me and... Um, he would meet me with Mr. Gens over at my mother's home for an exchange of keys and for the deposit. Okay. And was there a time set for that? or? I believe it was a few hours, but I, I'm not positive. Okay. So jumping forward a few hours, um, did you meet with Mr. Bashar and Mr. Gens at your mother's home? Yes, I did. Okay, that was um, uh, on the same day, the 8th, is that Yeah, right? it was on September 8th. Okay. October 8th? I'm sorry, it was October 8th. 2011, right? Correct. Okay. So you meet at your mother's house. What happens when you get there? Um, when I, um, I, I we, we met in the hallway. My mother was there. She also met Mr. Gens. Mr. Bashara came in with Mr. Gens. Um, Mr. Bashara had in his hand a uh, standard lease um, that he already had not filled out, but it had been typed up. I then had to fill out a few portions of it. Um, in addition, he had a um, receipt book, which had carbons, and he had um, cash. Who had cash? Mr. Bashara did. Okay. And um, did Mr. Bashar give you cash? 
Uh, yes, we signed the lease, and Mr. Gens kept a copy. I got a copy. He then produced um, a, um, like I said, the receipt book. He um, hand wrote out. We discussed the rent, and I wanted more um, security deposits, so we had to. There was a change made on the actual form, but um, Mr. Uh, Bashera then handed over a thousand dollars in and hundred dollar bills. Okay, hey, first witness, Rob. Yeah. I'm going to hand you what the mark on the table for closing in number eleven. I think by stipulation we'll move to the eleven. That's correct. Is this the lease that Mr. Bashara produced for you that day? Yes, it is. Okay. That's the one you had to fill out the names and the pertinent. Correct. Pertinent. I had to fill out my name and the date. But the lease itself was given to you by Mr. Bashara. Yes, he said he had uh, printed it from his uh, from his car. He had a computer and a printer. After Mr. Bashara gave you the the cash, how much cash was it? I was one thousand dollars and hundred dollar bills. And uh, you produced a receipt. Is that he produced a receipt, correct? Right? Yes, he hand wrote it out. I'm handing you people's one hundred two. Move to admit with the stipulation. Right? Yes, this is the receipt. None. None. So who filled out the receipt after Mr. Bashar gave you the cash to the rental department? Mr. Bashar did. Okay. And did he sign it in your presence? Uh, yes, and he also made the correction because there was a discussion about I wanted more security deposits, so that's why there's the change on there. Okay. After the receipt was filled out and after the cash was received and the lease was signed, did you get the keys to Mr. Gantz? Yes, I did. Okay. At that point, Mr. Gantz be became the tenant. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, now, the period of time for this lease started in October. It had to be prorated from um, October going forward, correct? Correct. Okay. And was that also discussed as part of the security deposit, rent amount, that sort of thing? Correct. Okay. Um, when was the next time you had contact with either Mr. Gentz or Mr. Bashar after that day on October 8th? Um, I did not have contact with Mr. Gentz again um, other than telephonically and the same with Mr. Bashar. Okay. Who did you have contact with first? Uh, the first would have been Mr. Bashara. Okay, and when was that? Um, approximately a month later. I do not know the exact date. He contacted me at home. He called you? Correct. And what did he want when he called you? Um, he called me to state he had not received um, payment for his finding of the tenant. Okay, and did you, what did you tell him? Well, I told him that I had not received a bill. Okay. And did you discuss that? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, after that conversation, who was the next person you talked to, Mr. Bashar or Mr. Gantz? The next one would have been Mr. Gens. Okay. And when was that? Um, that would have been, I, I stand corrected, that would have been probably Mr. Bashara. Okay. When was that? And that would have been approximately a month later. Okay. And was that telephone conversation again? Yes, it was. Who called him? Uh, Mr. Bashara called me. And um, what did he want when he called you? Again, he stated he had not received payment for the rental. What did you tell him? I told him I still had not received a bill. Okay. What did he say? Um, he said he would send one off to me. Okay. Um, when was the next time you had contact with Mr. Gens or Mr. Bashar? Um, I believe it was next would have been Mr. Uh, Gens when I called him because he did not pay rent. When was that? That would have been in December because I believe November's did transfer automatically from his bank account to mine. Okay. So as of December, the, um, two months into the lease agreement, there was a problem with the rent? Correct. And did you talk to Mr. Gens? Yes, I did. And did you express your In my notes. I kept notes when Mr. Bashar called me, but I didn't keep notes when I spoke to Mr. Gens. Okay. Let's, let's move on. Um, when was the next time you had a conversation with Mr. Bashara? Um, with Mr. Bashara, it would have been, I believe, on, yeah, I don't believe I had any contact with him until February 8th of 2012. And this is after you found out about his wife being murdered, correct? Yes. Okay. And did you call him or did he call you? He contacted me. Tell me about that. Uh, I was home. It was a Wednesday. Um, I was watching the news when I saw a um, breaking news story, um, and they flashed a picture of Mr. Bashara's home in Gross Point. I saw Detective Narduzzi and a police officer I don't know, or another law enforcement officer, walking up to the Bashara home. Um, Mr. Bashara opened the door. Beside him was his friend and attorney, Dean Valenti. Uh, Detective Narduzzi then issued what the news said was a search warrant of their home, and um, I believe the state police people were also there. Um, several minutes later, I believe it was, Mr. Bashara was seen leaving the home. The news was following him. Um, they followed him down to um, his attorney, David Grimes' office downtown. Um, Mr. Bashara then exited, went upstairs. Um, I was watching the news as Mr. Grimes came down and was talking to everyone, talking about this case. And the phone rang. And when I answered, it was Mr. Bashara.
Were you surprised to hear from Mr. Bashir at that point in time? Absolutely. I'm watching him on the news being followed by the police, and he calls my house. Okay. And did you have a conversation with him? Yes, I did. Tell us what that conversation was about. Um, well, I was very puzzled as to why he called me, and so I immediately asked why he was calling me. And he, in a very agitated voice, said, now hang on just a moment and I'll tell you. He then proceeded to tell me that he needed me to change the utilities out of his name at the 1226 Weyburn property. Now, wait a minute. <clears throat> um, he told you that you needed to change the utilities out of his name on, on your property that you run in Mr. Gantz? Correct. Okay. So this is the first you heard about the property, um, your property that you run in Mr. Gantz, the utilities being in Mr. Bashar's name? Yes. When, when I had met with Mr. Um, Gantz on October 8th, I told him, because it was a Saturday, I believe, I told him he had over the weekend to get the utilities out of his name and into mine. Um, two weeks after that, you I... You mean out of your name? Out of his. my name, correct. Out of my name into his. And two weeks after he moved in, I contacted DTE to see if utilities were not in my name. At that time, they told me they were out of my name. So I just assumed that the tenant had put them into his name. So when you rented the property, you told Mr. Gens, change utilities, put in your name, do it as soon as you can. It's Saturday, you can't do it today. Correct. Two weeks later, you checked just to make sure they weren't in your name, right? Absolutely. Did you ever check again to see if they were Mr. Gens's name? No, I would have no reason to. On February 8th, you get a phone call from the defendant, and he's telling you that you need to get those utilities out of his name into your name? Correct. What, what was your reaction to that? Well, first of all, I was shocked he was calling me. As I said, I'm watching him on the news. Second of all, I was extremely puzzled because as someone who owns rental properties, um, you know you never put utilities in your name. There would be absolutely no reason to. And the fact that Mr. Gens, um, Mr. Bashir had put them into his name for Mr. Gens, just extremely, found, I found that extremely puzzling. Now, did you have a conversation about, with Mr. Gens, I'm sorry, Mr. Bashir at that time, about both the gas and electric utilities? Yes, I did. Tell me about that. Um, he said he needed to, uh, he told me that I needed to change the gas out of um, his name and into my name. Um, and I was puzzled. I asked why. I said, well, he, they were in his name and he needed, out of, he needed them out of his name. I said, well, what about the electricity? And he pointed out that that had already been shut off, but he hadn't shut off the gas because he didn't want my pipes to freeze. And what did you say at that point? Well, I found that odd because I didn't say anything re regarding that, but you have to have electricity on for your furnace to work to blow the gas up. So I, I right away knew that there was something wrong with that statement. But um, I also found it quite puzzling that he had had the utilities in his name at all. And I started asking about that, and then I said, I don't even want to know why. Don't even bother telling me. But then he said that I needed to do it as soon as possible. And I told him that he was well aware that um, I told him I did not know what, what relationship he had with Mr. Gentz and what the arrangement was. But as a landlord, he should be well aware that in accordance with the Landlord Tenant of Act of 1971, a landlord cannot mess with a tenant's utilities. And I told him there was no way I was going to change the utilities into my name and possibly violate my tenant's right and the lease. And how did he take that? Um, he did not seem to take it very well. What do you mean by that? Um, he became very agitated, and I believe he said that he would have to make some arrangements or do whatever he needed to to get them out of his name. And did he say anything else at that point? Can I reference my notes? Because I did immediately write down what conversation we had. Yes, go ahead. That'll, that'll refresh your recollection. And these are notes that you made contemporaneously with the phone call? Yeah, you can tell. I did, like, handwritten on some pad I had sitting there on my phone. We're still talking about February 8th of 2000. Correct. Okay. Um, hang on just a minute. Let's see. Why did I need to transfer? Uh, he did, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, he did mention that he had the electri electricity disconnected on January 12th. He told me that. Um, oh, and he did tell me he tried to get the gas out of his name, um, but he was unable to because they couldn't access the house. And he also told me that the utilities had been in his, na in his name since October. Did he tell you that he was trying to gas it off on January, about the same time he turned off the gas, off the electricity? Yes, he told me that he had tried to, but he was unable to access the house. And he told you that he had the utilities in his name since October? Correct. Okay. Anything else in that conversation on the 8th? No. Did you hear from him a second, uh, another time? Uh, yes, I did. I heard from him again regarding the same, that was the last time I heard from him, and it was regarding the same exact situation, that the utilities. And was that around February 21st? Uh, yes, it was. And tell me about that. Um, he called, and again, I'm referencing my notes. He called approximately 20, 23 in the evening. He called me on my home phone, and it was a different number than he had called me from last time. 
Um, he stated again that he needed the utilities out of his name, that he had tried to get the gas out of his name, but again, they had been unable to access the, um, you, the, the gas meter to shut it off. Um, again, he seemed very unhappy with me. I again explained to him that um, I was not going to do that. I didn't know what arrangement he had. I was not going to violate the tenant's right. And, um, and I told him never to call me again. I was, at that point in time, pretty frustrated with him, too, and I was... I yelled at him not to call me again. I wanted no contact with him, and he became agitated with me. So he was agitated with you? Yes. And you were agitated with him? I, at the very end, I was, because one of the things that he had said he, when he was addressing the utilities and everything, I, um, he, he said, you know, you know, after all, I've just lost my wife. And the way he said it, you know, it just didn't sit well with me. Did you hear from him after that conversation? No, I did not. Did you receive a message from Dean Valente? Uh, yes, I did. Was that after the, the, 21st, the February 21st conversation you had with Mr. Um, Bashar? Uh, yes, it was the day that I went down for my second interview with the Gross Point Park Police. I do not recall the date. Um, the day you went and the second time you spoke to the police? Correct. You received a call from Mr. Lendon? Uh, yes, I believe a day later. Did you speak to him or leave, him, leave you a message? Um, I spoke to, directly to Mr. Valente.